Hey folks, Janet asked me to make her a little garden for her vegetables. Some place to grow some green beans and some peas. And so I figured I'd make a little video of me baking a little caged area for them. We're putting the veggies on lockdown. Actually we're doing it, as you can see, to keep Miss Lily and the rest of the dogs out of the vegetable garden. And it'll also give some nice tall fencing for the peas and the beans to climb up on. There I'm walking around like I'm lost. Muttering to myself. Alright, let's get building fence. If you've never used one of these post pounders, they are a handy tool. So much better trying to swing a sledgehammer up over your head trying to set a post in the ground. It gives you a lot more control for angle and how deep you set them. When you buy your T-post, make sure you ask for your clips. I was talking to the fellow there at Rural King and he was telling me that a lot of people forget to ask for their clips when they get the T-Post. That's how you get the wire to attach to the T-Post. It comes with them, it's free. But most people, he said, forget to ask for them and I guess they forget to give them to them. Now most people use a special fencing plier pull that wire around, but my hands are pretty strong so I just bend it. Lily sure is a good dog. She stays with me just all the time. And I'm sorry I do moan and groan a lot, but you know, you carry an extra person around on top of you and see how much you moan and groan. I'm working on getting in better shape. Project like this, exactly how I'm doing it. Now this post pounder was $35 at Lowe's. Rural King, 19.99. So I drove over to Circleville to go to Rural King. And I was concerned it was going to be a cheap one, but it wasn't. It was a good, solid post pounder. These 50 inch, 16 foot long cattle panels were also a good deal over there. They'd be good for cows, pigs, goats turkeys, chickens, wouldn't do much with little bitties, but that humming you hear in the background folks, that's my drone overhead. I got the drone cam up in the air. Trying to make it interesting by giving you different camera angles. I've got a GoPro session on my head. I've got my Canon 70D on a tripod and my DJI Phantom 4 flying overhead giving us aerial photography. Boy, I tell you, it felt so good having a post pounder in my hand and doing some work. It was hot too. I know I'm looking like I'm wandering around pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, the old cops is after me. Um, I may walk around look like I'm walking around pretty slow, but it's about 90 degrees out there while I'm building that fence. I was I was sweating a pickle. Getting some more fence ties. <clears throat> They're always tangled up in that bag. You're paying the neck trying to get them out of there. 
Someone's got to figure out a better way of selling them. you get older you gain a little experience you get to the point where you can just kind of eyeball something and know it's right and that's what I did here I just kind of eyeballed it and I knew it was right now here you're gonna see me setting this post I'm setting this post trying to determine where the gates gonna go you'll see me looking here right look left look right look left there I'm figuring out how wide the gate should be left, right, left, right, making sure the distance is correct, make sure that panel is just the right length, could have gotten a measuring tape and measured it, but you know, when you've done this a time or two, certainly not my first fence I've put together, you get to where you can just pretty much eyeball it. May not be perfect. Not going to be down to this centimeter, certainly. But it's okay for fencing and government work. Now I'm going to cut the gate out of that panel. Later on, I'll come back and trim off all these rods sticking off the end of it. So, battery operated metal cutting tool by default. Boy, that's a handy little tool. This is the second one of those I own. Last one I left up in Alaska. Particularly handy for cutting paddle locks. <laughs> Perfect fit. These white tubes you see here with the hole drilled in, this is my hydroponic table in the process of putting that together. You can see the uh, corn sitting there waiting to be planted. I decided to do a companion chip planting of planting beans, peas, and corn all inside this little enclosure that I'm making right here. Not much room to get my finger down in here. This one's not too bad, but the next one down further, I had trouble getting my finger in there to fit. Having strong hands is one thing, but having big fingers, yes, I'll say it, fat fingers, they don't fit in small places. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. 
Get around her. Can't fit my finger through there. There we go. All right. I'll have to get some wire to wire to that corner. And then make that into a gate. So I gotta trim, I gotta trim that off. Uh. Now you could use a pair of bolt cutters to trim these ends off. But considering I'm making a gate area in here, and you know, Gahanna and my grandkids are gonna be going through there. I really like the way this cutoff tool cuts it off flush and doesn't leave any kind of sharp edge out for somebody to get cut on. It really is the right tool for that job. Now yeah, what the hell, just stick the blade right down into the dirt. Battery's about dead. Mm. Ah. Well, that's pretty much it. Got to do a little bit of wiring, pull the corner together, and wire the gate so it's got a secure spot. But that'll keep the dogs out and keep the beans from running wild. Corn's not going to escape. What do you think? It looked out pretty what? good. It came out pretty good. Looking good. All right, folks. Well, I'll have more for you here in the coming up video. We'll go ahead and planting on the next video. I hope you enjoyed watching this kind of thing. By the way, we also have goat milk soaps that we're making. Now, we're doing this for a living. This is how I plan on making a living. So, in the description down below, there's links down there so you can order yourself some soap. Please do like and subscribe. We'll have more for you next time.